Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Hillary Clinton is making history and shattering the glass ceiling by becoming the first woman nominated for president by a major party. Plus, there's a new twist as all charges are dropped against Baltimore police officers in the death of Freddie Gray. Up next, we'll tell you how the community is coping. And we're following breaking developments right now in the search for the man who sexually assaulted an 18-year-old woman in Detroit. That assault allegedly happened in a house on the 10,000 block of Foley near Grand River. Of course, it's a story that police are following right now as they've given us this sketch of the suspect. They say that this man posed as a good Samaritan by helping to break up a fight between the victim and her boyfriend. But after the victim got into the suspect's car, she was taken to a vacant home and that's where the assault happened. Our Lauren Podell is joining us live now with the very latest and Lauren, this victim apparently thought that that suspect was going to help her. And I understand that someone just spotted this guy at a gas station. We have some major developments in this case, Avrod. My photographer and I were at the Zoom gas station getting surveillance video of this alleged suspect when people who work there said that that same man the Detroit police are looking for walked in, said, why did you give police a picture of me? And then take a look. He got into this silver dark gray Pontiac Grand Prix, the exact car that Detroit police were looking for, took off north on Hubble, and we made a phone call to 911. Several people at the Zoom gas station made a phone call to 911. And here we are on Marlowe, the 12,000 block of Marlowe Street, where Detroit police do have someone in the back of that police cruiser. We do believe that is the man they are looking for, the alleged suspect. Now, we do not have that confirmed, but the person that was in that car matched the description of who Detroit police are looking for, and they do have someone right now live on Marlowe Street in front of this home in the back of a police cruiser. In the meantime, I've just gotten off the phone with authorities from Detroit police. And while this all unfolded Evrod seconds ago, they want this to be very clear. This man is dangerous. He victimized an 18 year old woman more than two weeks ago. This has been an active search and they want everyone to take a good look at his picture and the story behind it. Take a look. It's a sketch of a man Detroit police and Crime Stoppers want everyone to see. I'm sorry that that happened to somebody. We'll definitely be on the lookout. Investigators believe the man in this sketch and surveillance photo sexually assaulted an 18 year old woman Sunday, July 10th at this filthy overgrown vacant home on Detroit's west side. A home neighbors say is nothing but trouble. Well, I used to live in this neighborhood. You know, I got a lot of friends around here and um, uh, that car do look familiar. Everything started at the Zoom gas station. Police say the victim was involved in a fight with her boyfriend at the corner of Hubble and Plymouth. That's when what appeared to be a good Samaritan stopped to break up the fight. Police say the quote good guy told the 18 year old to get inside of this 2002 Grand Prix and the driver, this man in his early 30s or 40s, would take her home. Instead, police say he took her here over a mile away to this abandoned house on Foley Street where he sexually assaulted her. And now what cameras at the Zoom gas station captured before the assault is their best chance of catching him. Now we wanted to walk across the street here to give you a better look at this car. This is the car you just saw there in the image that police believe is the vehicle that that 18 year old got in on July 10th. So right now we do have Detroit police here on the scene. This group of gentlemen right here in the t-shirts, they were also at that Zoom gas station when we saw that alleged suspect walk in and confront some of the workers there. They also called 911 and in fact, uh, Evra, they brought us here. They showed us where police uh, caught up with this man. He just drove off in the back of a police cruiser. So we, of course, will be uh, keeping in touch with Detroit police because now the alleged suspect in this rape case may be in custody. So stay tuned. We will bring you the updates as soon as they come in. But a very active scene all unfolding minutes before this newscast, Evrod. So we wanted to let people know, look, you still need to be on the lookout. This man's picture is still vital but someone related to this case is in custody. Reporting live from Detroit's west side, Lauren Podell, back to you.
Very interesting turn of events. Lauren, thank you. Now to a developing story out of Baltimore, where prosecutors have dropped the three charges, the three remaining charges against officers involved in the death of Freddie Gray. Gray was critically injured in the back of a police van in April of last year before eventually dying a week later in the hospital. The decision to drop the remaining charges comes after a judge had already found three of the six officers involved not guilty. A fourth officer had his case heard by a jury, but the judge ruled a mistrial. Now, many people in Baltimore wonder if there will ever be justice. A 25-year-old man was killed while in police custody, while in a police van. And if criminal charges were not brought, one must even further wonder whether our justice system is capable of bringing police officers to justice. Baltimore City State's attorney Marilyn Mosby, who prosecuted the six officers, spoke as well, defending her prosecution and still blaming officers for Gray's death. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is bringing his campaign to Toledo, Ohio today, where he'll attend an event at the Huntington Center in downtown Toledo. The doors for that event opening at 5 p.m. and the rally starting at 8. Tickets are available on the Trump campaign website, and we're going to have special coverage for you, live coverage of that rally beginning this afternoon. Meanwhile, Trump's running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, will visit Michigan tomorrow. He's going to attend a town hall in Grand Rapids, and then later a rally at an undisclosed location in Oakland County. Our guy Gordon just finished a one-on-one -on -one interview with Pence previewing his visit, and you can see that during our 5 o'clock newscast and on clickondetroit.com. And we want to give you a live look now at the Democratic National Convention inside of it, where we are in for day three. And tonight we are going to see three highly anticipated speeches. President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden are going to be taking the stage. And then also speaking tonight is Hillary Clinton's running mate, Tim Kaine, who will introduce himself to the nation for the first time. Flint Mayor Karen Weaver will also be taking the convention's stage tonight. Mayor Weaver is expected to speak at 6.30 p.m. We're hearing that she's planning to use the, this opportunity to keep the Flint water crisis in the national spotlight. She'll update the country on Flint's progress. We're looking forward to hearing about that. Hillary Clinton made history, though, last night, becoming the first woman nominated for president by a major party. The night included a very passionate and personal speech from the official nominee's husband, former President Bill Clinton. It was his 10th appearance at the DNC convention. And last night, he played the role of supportive spouse, telling voters that they got it right. What's the difference in what I told you and what they said? How do you square it? You can't. One is real, the other is made up. Good for you, because earlier today, you nominated the real one. And more emotion with the mothers of the Black Lives Matter movement also on on stage last night. There you see them. Of course, you can catch all of the action tonight right here on Local 4. As our Devin Skillian is in Philadelphia all week long, where he's going to have special live coverage of the convention for you tonight as well. His reports continue this afternoon, both on the air here on Local 4 and on ClickOnDetroit.com. Well, let's get Brandon Rue in as we're talking weather now and the temperatures that we are seeing today going back up a little bit. They are. Yeah, yesterday's high 88. We're already 87 at Metro Airport. That's our official recording station. We've got some lower numbers in some spots. 83 Pontiac, 83 Gross Eel. Good afternoon port here on 82 degrees there. We add the humidity on top of that. It's not making a huge difference. A degree or two warmer today. So just a little bit more humidity on top of what we saw yesterday and a little bit warmer. So we advise taking breaks if you're outside, certainly drinking lots of water, lots of sunscreen, 87 now, 89 degrees at two o'clock and a little steamy, 91 feeling more like 92, 93 through your afternoon. Coming up, we'll track this cold front. It will bring some showers to parts of the area later on today. We'll talk that plus Thursday storm chances and remember you can always keep updated with the forecast on radar or any alerts and warnings. It's the local forecasters app Download it for free in your app store WDIV. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. Let's go to Madison Heights now where a missing 17 year old boy with autism has been found safe. So a very happy ending to this story. We want to show you Dion Gardner, the subject of an Amber alert that you might have gotten from overnight. 
His parents spotted him walking this morning, not too far from the Meyer store where he was last seen and disappeared from. Gardner's mother, Wanda Fuller, talked with us about exactly how she felt when she finally found her son. I was so relieved. I was so thankful to God, thankful to all the support of the police and, and you all. I just appreciate all the prayers. Yeah, he was found safe and sound. In total, Dion was missing for only a few hours, but uh, thankfully was reunited with his parents unharmed. The search is on for a killer. After a man was shot to death on Detroit's east side, the 37-year-old's body was found on Ryad Street near Kelly Road and Meringue. That victim was shot in the head early this morning just as he was getting out of his car, which has since been towed from the scene. No arrests have been made, but police do continue to investigate. And a robbery at a citizen's bank this morning left no one injured, but a lot of damage to an ATM. This happened at Kensington and East Warren, where we have video of the aftermath. Take a look at your screen. Police did respond to the scene early this morning after the thief reportedly broke into the lower portion of a drive up ATM. And right now we don't know if that thief got away with any of the cash that could have been inside. All right, so to come here on Local 4 News at noon, dash cam video from a police car is going viral, but this time it's for good reason. We're going to show you the heartwarming moments from Texas. And next at noon, the mystery surrounding a bomb that went off inside of a German bar on Sunday, and we'll tell you why the attack might not have gone off as planned. If you're and now to the latest news out of Germany, as investigators think the man who detonated a bomb in a bar on Sunday might have accidentally ignited it earlier than he intended. This information coming from eyewitnesses and an online chat the bomber was in moments before that explosion. It's still unknown who the bomber was chatting with, but police are investigating. And police also say that a roll of 50 euros, which is about 55 American dollars, was found on the attacker after that incident. And the man who tried to assassinate former President Ronald Reagan is being released. A federal judge is allowing John Hinckley Jr. to leave the psychiatric hospital that he's been living in and uh, found that it's no longer beneficial. While no longer in the hospital, he'll still need to meet with a psychiatrist. Hinckley will now move in with his elderly mother in Virginia, where he must live for a full year before moving out. Dashcam video from a police car in Texas is going viral, but this time it's for a good reason. Listen to this. Pastor Wendell Davis was pulled over for an expired registration sticker and no front license plate. But when the cop approached the car, he didn't give him a ticket. Instead, he asked the pastor for a request. Check this out. He said, my second request is, will you pray for me? And I said, absolutely, I will. God, I lift him, I lift his family, I lift his co-workers, his colleagues. And, all that share. and there you see them both holding hands there, praying just outside of the car as he was pulled over. This heartwarming dash cam video already has nearly 4,000 views on YouTube. All right, still to come here on Local 4, Apple is the latest tech giant to get into the video streaming game. We're going to tell you how you can access some of their content. That's coming up next. A little beach. A little fountain action. Campus Martius, a place to be. We're looking at warming temperatures. Could that mean a little trouble? We're tracking potential trouble coming up next. In Rio next month, former Michigan Wolverine Sean Ryan takes on the world swimming the marathon. No pool, no lanes. It's open water chaos. Everybody's right on top of each other. Everybody's on the person's feet in front of them. Um, and everybody's fighting for position. But the real challenge is, what else is in the water? Sometimes you have to worry about uh, the critters in the ocean. Sharks, jellyfish, and in Rio, millions of microscopic critters recently detected drug-resistant super bacteria. And we're gonna do some probiotics and antibiotics before the race just to really stay on top of everything. An Olympic-sized threat tonight at 11. Right now. All right, welcome back, everybody. Some good news for all of you with Apple products, which is almost everyone. The tech giant is getting into the video streaming game. Until recently, Apple has denied interest in unique programming, but that's no longer the case. While no official release date has been announced just yet, Apple is going to start streaming at least one new series. The series will be available strictly to Apple Music subscribers. And of course, uh, if you don't have Apple or Apple products, then you will have to get one. Brandon, I know you have one. 
Android I users do. are jealous. They are. <laughs> so does that just mean if I have an iTunes account? No, Apple Music is totally different. Totally it costs different. more. Okay. Either way, it probably will bring costs down overall, right? Competition usually does that, or at least eventually does that. Good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Hope you're doing well. We've got 87 degrees, a southwest wind at 8. And although it's hot, humidity at 43% manageable. It's going to get a little bit more humid through the afternoon and certainly a little bit higher than what we saw yesterday. 91 this afternoon, the high. Great time to spend out at the pool, at the beach. As long as there's water nearby, some shade, you're going to need it. Tonight, we're looking at some shower chances, but most of this north of I-69, a few isolated showers even possible between that M-59, I-69 corridor between 5 and 9 p.m. And we'll show you here why. A little cool front up north, you know, southwest winds and warming conditions here, but this cold front slowly sliding south. And as it does, you see some of the showers and storms it's producing back through Wisconsin and Iowa and Minnesota, and that is projected again to hit our very far northern counties gets a little bit more uh, widespread tomorrow here. Rain and thunder shower activity mainly in the afternoon hours. Some wet weather from the south pumping in and also from the west just piling up and we will likely get into those showers right now. Not under any risk for severe weather, but summertime heat induced showers. You just need to keep your eyes to the skies and be prepared no matter what. Here is the computer model stopping at seven o'clock and yeah, a good little lawn watering for our friends and family up in the tip of the thumb. But you see even some of these that are down a little bit closer to that M59 corridor. Most of us won't see much of anything until tomorrow afternoon. We've We've got some showers coming in here, hoping for some good gully washers from these. We could always use a nice late July soaker and right now again, most of it should be in the afternoon may have one or two showers around early tomorrow morning, but I believe again after two or three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we'll keep our eyes on it for you, but always smart if you're going to be out and about to keep your eyes to the skies. Cold fronts, we sh uh, showed it up north and it will bring temps down a little bit tomorrow, Friday, even through the weekend, and I don't think we see much in the way of wet weather on Friday or Saturday, but models do show a chance on Saturday morning, especially near the Ohio border. Evra? Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. Still to come, we're going to show you some, some little ducklings who were rescued after getting separated from their mom and how it all unfolded. That's coming up next. Ben Bailey. All right, lastly, before we go, we want to show you some, uh, some pretty cool animals. <laughs> yeah. First, we want to show you these baby ducklings in Japan who jumped into a pond and then realized well, it was a little bit hard to get out. <laughs> That's when a steel worker built a slope for them to climb up and get back to their mom, who was calling frantically. It took a little while, but both ducklings finally figured it out and returned to their mom. Very cool. And then back here at home now, we've got some pictures of the animals here at the Detroit Zoo getting oh. fed some frozen treats to cool <laughs> off in today's hot weather. That's cool. But here's uh, the polar bear who's enjoying a, a nice uh, underwater treat. And that's exactly where I want to be right now. Not in the polar bear uh, water, Not swimming but with him. swimming, exactly. Definitely Not swimming with him, but just swimming. One of the cooler exhibits <laughs> that they have over there. Also, this otter joining in on the fun. You remember when we had our otter cam? Going oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, and here's an example of what they are being fed. What is that? It looks like chunks of fish look like. And frozen in like ice cubes Probably. or something? Probably. <laughs> It doesn't really nice sound appetizing, mm. but maybe they like it. How about this grizzly bear cooling <laughs> off, sliding down the slide? All things water, all good today. How are you cooling down today? Good question. I need to think about that. Kids have tennis practice, so uh, no. maybe jump in the pool. Uh, okay, that'll work. That'll work. I'm going to be in the air conditioning on the couch. That'll work too. That will definitely I'll work. Be... Hopefully you're staying cool yeah. as well, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Who doesn't want